Hi everyone. In this video, I am going to discuss the idea of inventory cost flows specifically within a periodic inventory system. Now, cost flows are interesting because no matter which type of system you have, periodic or perpetual, the cost flow conceptually still works the same way. For instance, in the example of first in, first out, FIFO, you always pull your earlier inventory um, as what has sold and the later inventory is what remains. You know, LIFO being the opposite, right? Later inventory is what is sold, earlier inventory remains. Conceptually, cost flows will behave the same regardless of what inventory system uh, a company uses. However, there is going to be a stark difference in the calculations that are made and the resulting values that come out of those calculations depending on the system. In this video, I'm going to focus on periodic systems. They're actually the easier one when it comes to cost flows. The reason being this, the timing of purchases and sales in a periodic system ends up being irrelevant. Now, let me clarify that. For, for just a moment. When I say the timing of purchases and sales, what I mean is relative to each other. The timing of purchases matters because you still need to know what order your purchases were made in in order to apply concepts like FIFO and LIFO. However, relevant to when sales are made, it does not matter because remember under a periodic system, you do not track cost of goods sold, cost, sorry, cost of goods sold on a sales by sales basis. Rather, instead, you're going to do an account of remaining inventory at the end of the accounting period. And that physical count will then be used to calculate cost of goods sold based on the cost flow you've, you've chosen. So as I say down here, cost flows are used to calculate cost, cogs and in ending inventory only one time, and that one time is at the end of the accounting period, specifically following the physical inventory count. Now you may be saying, well, wait, how is that any different than in a perpetual system? Well, here's the deal. In a perpetual system, COGS has to be calculated every single time a sale is made, which means you have to apply your cost flow based only on the information known at the point in time when the sale occurs. So whereas in a periodic system, by the time you get to the end of the period, every purchase you've made has already happened. In a perpetual system, at the time you make a sale, you may have only made one purchase so far or two purchases so far, and you've got to apply your cost flow specifically to just what has already happened. In other words, the timing of purchases relevant re relative to the timing of sales actually matters a whole lot. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop there. Um, on perpetual inventory systems as far as this video is concerned because in this video I do want to just focus on the easier of the two, the periodic system cost flows. So let's walk through an example of one FIFO, one LIFO, one average cost. We'll start off with FIFO. Here we go. Flyer Core purchases 100, 120, 150 units of inventory on these dates respectively. It also gives you the prices respectively. A physical count at the end of June shows 150 units on hand. What is Flyer Core's COGS and ending inventory, and specifically on this slide, under FIFO? Now, I always encourage students, whenever you see a problem like this, where you're just given this kind of information dump in paragraph form, it's definitely a lot easier to go ahead and set up kind of a chart that you can work with that, that puts this information in a more um, readily, readily available and readily usable um, um, form. And so what I mean by that is I'm going to set up a chart here where I'm going to say, okay, what was the date of the activity? What was the activity on that day? How many units were involved? What was the price per unit? And therefore on that day, because essentially what we're dealing with is, is batches, right? Every day is a different batch. What was the cost of that batch that happened on that day? So we start off in this case with June 1st, and on June 1st, we bought 100 units, so that's 100, I'm going to put a P for purchased, whoop, sorry, wrote that wrong, purchase, I'll put perch, I have a separate column for activity, sorry about that, 100 units, and that was at $8 per unit. 
on June 2nd was my next day. I also had a purchase. That purchase was 120 units, and that was $10 per unit. On June 11th, I had another purchase. That was for 100 units. 100, not 1,000. $9 per unit. And then finally, June 21st, purchase of 50 units, and that was $12 per unit. All right. And, and of course, now I'm going to have June 30th, and this is going to be phys count. Physical count shows 150 units. And there's no dollars per unit on that one because, well, we don't actually know, right? That's part of the problem. What are those units worth? All right, so here's our setup. <clears throat> we need to go ahead and cost out the batches. So batch one, eight units at, uh, I mean, 100 units at $8 each, that's $800. Batch two, 120 units at $10 each, that's $1,200. Batch three, 100 units at $9 each, that's $900. And finally, batch four, 50 units at $12 each, that is $600. So there's the cost per batch. I can also tally up what were the total cost that we had. And that's going to be 800 plus 1200, 2000, 2900, 3500. I can also figure out what were the total units. And I'm going to break this into two because I need to know units purchased and units sold. So units purchased was my 100 plus 120, that's 220, 320, 370. So I had 370 units purchased. I don't know how many units are sold looking directly at the information, but I do know how many units were left, right? And so I can pull out my calculator and I can say, well, 370 purchased minus 150 left means I must have sold 220. So 220 sold. All right, at this point, I have about all of the information I need to calculate cost of goods sold, and ending inventory. And before I do that, though, I'm going to do one quick thing. I'm going to copy this because I don't want to waste your time rewriting it every slide because we're going to do LIFO, and so we're going to need that information there. And we're going to do average cost, and we're going to need that information there. So let's just copy and paste it now. We'll come back to those later. And let's deal with FIFO. All right, under FIFO, we assume first in, first out. In other words, what we bought first is what we sold. We know we sold 220. So under FIFO, we know that this whole batch, 100 units, is gone. So COGS, $800 from that batch. We also know that this whole batch is gone, 120. So COGS, another $1,200. And that's it. Notice 100 units, 120 units, that puts us at 220. We only sold 220. That is our entire cost of goods sold. We tallied that up. $2,000 cost of goods sold. Now, what is our ending inventory worth? What is its cost that we still haven't figured out? Well, there's two ways we could go about it. We could simply say, well, we know we got rid of the first two batches in their entirety. We still have the second two batches, so we could just add that up. 900 plus 600 is 1,500. Another way we could go about it, though, ending balance, is we could say, well, we know we had $3,500 total cost minus the 2,000 that we sold means we have 1,500 left. That's the cost of the ending inventory. You can go about it two ways. Remember, this total cost right here represents your cost of goods available for sale. Therefore, if you subtract out the portion that sold, what you're left with is the, the portion that is left. So our ending balance in this case is 1500 That's FIFO. All right, let's do LIFO now. Remember the difference between FIFO and LIFO. FIFO pulls from the top. The oldest purchases sell first. LIFO pulls from the bottom. The most recent purchases sell first. So again, we sold 220 units. So if the company was using LIFO, they would pull from the latest units first. So COGS. We sell that last batch, which is worth 600 bucks. That was 50 units. We sell the batch before it, worth $900. That was 100 units. Now notice, combined, this is 150. We only need to get to 220. 
So we're not going to sell this entire next batch. We're only going to sell part of it. Specifically, we're going to sell 70 units of it. And so 70 at $10 each, because we're just using the partial batch. Let's scoot that up just a little bit. That works out to $700. Now I've covered my full 220 units, 50, 100, and 70 from that batch. I add those together, and that gives me a cost of goods sold of $2,200. All right, this is LIFO. Now, what about ending inventory? Well, this one's a little less straightforward. Remember, there's two ways you can do it. And on the last slide, under FIFO, it was kind of straightforward regardless of which way you, used, you did it. On this one, it's a little less straightforward if you want to just see what's left. Because you don't have two clean batches left. You have this batch left at $800, but you only have part of this batch left. You have 50 of it. So you would have to take your 800 plus 50 times 10, that's another 500, for a total of 1,300 left. Alternatively, we know we had 3,500 cost of goods available for sale, minus the 2,200 that we sold leaves us with 1,300 left. Okay, so that's LIFO. Now let's take a look at average cost. So, last one. Average cost doesn't pull from either direction. Average cost, on the other hand, just um, combines all your inventory on a weighted average basis and says, here's what every unit was worth, regardless of where it came from, regardless of what batch it came from. And so, to figure that out, we first have to say, okay, what was the cost of goods available for sale? All right, and how many units were available for sale, which we know was 370, and we're gonna divide that. So 350 divided by 370. And that gets us approximately $9.46 per unit. That is the average cost per unit. If we wanna know what our cost of goods sold was, we simply say, well, every unit was worth 9.46, and according to our information that we figured out, we sold 220 units. So times, whoops, sorry, I just gotta grab my pen here, times 220. And so I'm just gonna go ahead and round this so we get the right numbers. That's gonna come out to 208.120. If I wanna calculate my ending balance, I can either take the most straightforward way, which in this case was I know for a fact that there were 150 units left. And of course, everything's being valued at 946. So I could just say 946 times 150. And that comes out to 1419. Or alternatively, I could take my 3,500 available for sale, cost of goods, AFS, minus my cost of goods sold, 2081, right? So I could do it this way. And that gets me 1419, right? Ending balance. It doesn't matter which approach you take, whether you take the, I'm going to do it straightforward, or I'm going to do it by taking my available for sale and subtracting out my cost of goods sold. Either way, you'll get an ending balance. And that's how you do average cost. All right, so that's it. That was cost flows specifically in a periodic system. Notice we didn't even talk about when did the sales take place because it doesn't matter when the sales took place. All that matters in a periodic system is what did you sell and what were your total goods available for sale and the various cost of those batches along the way. And then you just apply the concept from there. It's a lot simpler than dealing with a perpetual system where you actually have to figure out on a day-by-day -day basis what was your cost of goods sold every time you make a sale. So with that said, hopefully you found this helpful, um, and I hope you join me for another video.